Hello, this is Tiffany Westrich Robertson. I am reporting live from the American College of Rheumatology 2004, or 2004, what year am I in? 2024 conference that we have in our Go With Us to Conferences program. I'm also a person living with non-radiographic axial spondyloarthritis, and I am reporting back on a couple new novel or new treatments in Sjogren's disease and also in psoriatic arthritis. Probably the two hottest diseases, meaning there's always a ebb and flow on what diseases are being studied. We've been seeing Sjogren's disease for a couple of years now, mainly because they actually don't have an approved treatment. So there's a lot of focus on there, but psoriatic arthritis is making a comeback. So we've been hearing a lot about that. And there's one that I'm going to talk about today. So the first one is with Sjogren's disease. And this one is from Johnson and Johnson. And it is called Nipocalamab. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And this is a novel. When I say novel, it means it's different. It's a first. It is a novel treatment that is preventing certain autoantibodies in our body from being able to reproduce, kind of starves them. And then as a result, we are able to achieve better outcomes in the disease. So in this case, the targets or mechanism of action, so that the where the drug is targeting or trying to prevent certain cells, antibodies, et cetera, from reproducing. In this case, they're targeting what is called IgG and other antibodies preventing them from binding. And as a result, it creates a chain reaction where the IgG in our bodies cannot recycle itself. And then as a result, less disease activity. Fascinating. Hmm? So this was presented as doing very well in the clinical trials, which is on a phase two. So once it passes phase two, and the safety and efficacy profiles are a thumbs up. It moves on to the phase three trials, which are a little bit bigger. And then assuming it still does very well, then it goes to market. So we're getting really close to some new Sjogren's disease treatments. And that is super exciting since there are no, none that are on market to, as to date. So that was the first one that I had gone to. And the second one was on psoriatic disease. And this one is the mechanism of action or the type of treatment is called a TYK2, T-Y-K number two. And this is by Takeda and it is a pill form. And in this one, it's novel or unique in that it tries it's different than JAK inhibitors. So JAK inhibitors are also pill form and they have been around for a, a while and they are similar, but they have little JAK1, JAK2, JAK3 inhibition. So less than the others and it focuses on high inhibition of this TIC2. So it is a combination of it growing on what a JAK inhibitor is. That is the evolution. And in the clinical trial, they were working on dosages. So the clinical trials, in addition to if it's safe and if it's effective, they also have to figure out what would be the right dose for people. And so in this case, they did a five milligram, they did a 15 milligram, and they did a 30 milligram, and I think those were the highest. And so the 15 and the 30 had very good results. And 12 weeks into the study, a significant amount of patients either had low disease activity or were in remission. So they did not give a definition of what remission was other than some scientific numbers, which is a little different than what we may say as remission as patients, but that is very promising as well. So a lot of new treatments, a lot of new opportunity for disease control happening in psoriatic arthritis as well. 
and it sounds like it's just exciting times for innovation and accessing treatments for those of you who may not be having luck on others. So there you go. Lots of good things happening at ACR 2024, and I'm so glad that you could go with us.